All right, today I'm working on a 2004 Honda Accord. Uh, transmission is a BCLA. This is a five-speed automatic. And I'm going to go over a common issue on this particular transmission, a common problem uh, with the feed tubes. And Honda has an update uh, for this problem. And if you're working on one of these, and pretty much if you take this apart, you find the feed tubes are okay, you should change them anyway, because it is a common problem. They actually come apart at the seam, uh, as the case with this one. Uh, we all know the number one issue with the, with the Hondas in general is the clutches flaking off and clogging the screen. The car stops moving when it gets hot. All right, you can shut it off for a few minutes, turn it back on, you'll be able to move again maybe a few blocks. That wasn't the case with this one. Uh, this one came in, we, the car was driven here. I didn't drive the car, but the car was driven here and left here uh, for the transmission. We scanned it, we had a PO780 code, uh, which is something like hydraulic malfunction. Uh, that could be anywhere from uh, the linear solenoids to something inside the unit. But once I read the sheet and I saw a 780 code, and I saw it was a BCLA, I'm thinking this probably has an issue with the feed tubes, and of course it, it does. So I'm going to get a little closer here, uh, and it's, it's these two particular feed tubes in general, and these feed the, uh, I believe they feed the secondary shaft, and when I did break the unit down, I found the low clutch, which is first gear, clutches and steels no good, and second clutch clutches and steel is no good. All right, so I'm gonna get a little closer. Uh, I'm gonna take the tubes out. Uh, I just have this one bolt that holds them in the old style and it's also, a, a, the redesigned set has a bolt also, but I'm gonna show you those, I have those. Uh, there is a collar in here uh, that you really should check for ring grooves uh, from the secondary shaft and there are also O-rings behind it. Uh, so I'm gonna show you that. And those are the two common issues that I see with this unit. With this particular unit, the BCLA, there is also another model called an MCLA. All right, so let me get a little closer here. I'm gonna uh, zoom in on the, um, I, the valve body is done, uh, but I left everything else off just so we can get a good shot of the tubes. But uh, it's a little busy here, so. I'm working on a, on a Honda unit here. I got a U151 there. I got a, on the other bench, I got a 722.6, and I have a 722.3 out of the 91 Mercedes. Um, all right, so I want to get a little closer here, and we'll go over the uh, update on the feed tubes, and I want to show you the collar and where that goes as well. Okay, so here are the feed tubes that are the problem and what Honda has updated. Okay, so I'm gonna take, there's a bolt that holds them in. Okay, so here is the bolt. And now we're gonna take the one out, and we're gonna take the other one out. Now first, all right, here's the, this is the little bracket here that, uh, that holds it, that holds the tubes in. But let's take a look at the tubes first, and you can see where it came apart. Okay, this tube is good. And then look at the other one, all right? It came apart right at the seam here. All right, here's the other piece that's still inside the transmission. It's, it's, it, these tubes go into the regulator body of the valve body set. Okay, so here is the tube, and it comes apart right here at the seam. Very common problem. All right, and I'm thinking from that tube coming apart, we got a fried set of clutches and steels for uh, first gear, and a fried set for second gear. All right, now we're going to look at this set again. These actually, this clutch here looks a little worn out. You know, this one also was worn out. But the screen was not clogged in this, the car drove. Uh, okay, so 
the updated set of tubes. All right, so we have the broken tube that came apart at the scene. All right, now, I'm gonna see if I can get you guys the part number because I get these from my supplier so they have their part number on it and it's slapped right over the, uh, uh, their sticker with their part number is slapped right over the part number from Honda. Uh, but let me ask him if he actually has the OE number. So here are the updated set of tubes and they each have their own bracket on them. All right, here's one and here's the other one. So they kind of go together like that and sit into the transmission. So this is pretty much every one of these that I do, whether these tubes are good or not. And I'm gonna honestly say uh, uh, probably 75% of the time, you know, I, I have, the, they come apart like this. So it's again, so common that Honda actually did an update. All right, so we can put these tubes in. I'll go right in one. There we go. And I don't know what I did with the bolt. There it is. The bolt to go in. And then I torque this down to 100 inch pounds. Oh, give me one second. All right, they see my car inside, they start calling. Okay, so we got the tubes, and now one other thing that you should check when doing these units is this collar here. All right, um, the secondary shaft fits in here, and second gear is fed through here, and that goes right in here. Okay, there's a couple of O-rings on the back, if these O-rings get compromised, you'll have pretty much like a long one-two shift. If you get some ring grooves in here, it should be perfectly smooth. You can also have a long one-two shift. Now, the only thing is, is this sits, I, I lube this up real good because I don't want to screw up the O-rings, when I'm, the new O-rings when I'm putting this in, so I put some grease on it, and I also use this a lot this SDP oil treatment because it's really slippery. I use it a lot when rebuilding, um, especially like the Mercedes units and stuff like that uh, to make sure everything goes in very nicely. And it sits on top of this bearing and then you have your your uh, little piece that goes in here that's held down with a bolt so everything stays in. There is that, I don't know where that is. Uh, here, this little, piece here holds everything down but the bearing is very tight in here and it's little it's a little tough to get out so I mean what I do I have the wash tank that with the water that's very very hot so I run this through the wash tank and then I use uh, I have a device with a, um, a piece that comes in and spreads out gets underneath the bearing and I use a slide hammer and it, I've never had a problem getting this out so if if anything you can probably heat up around the bearing wanted to get that sleeve out if you don't have a like a wash tank like I have uh, and then if you have some kind of a slide hammer device or something you can get un underneath the bearing it's a little tight in there but you know once it's it's loose in here this bearing comes out in like one or two shots but uh, a lot of times <clears throat> this is uh, grooved this is a different sleeve that I had uh, the original one that did come through uh, it's actually, I had to change the case on this. This is a different case because the starter bolt broke and I had one of these cases. It's still in the case, but that one had a groove in it. So, you know, right off the bat, that's gonna have to be changed. And you have two ceiling rings here that also should be changed. Again, we'll compromise your one, two shift. Uh, so that's uh, pretty much what to look for, you know, other than your typical overhaul on the BCLA and MCLA. And one more thing I just wanted to run by you as far as these linear solenoids go. You know, a lot of, I do a lot of like the Honda Odysseys, like the BAYAs, the BVGA. And the way that goes is the uh, linears A and B is the dual and the linear C is the single. 
Okay, now on this one, linear A is the single and B and C are the dual. And I had a couple of, probably about three instances where the transmission, we ended up doing the overhaul, but the transmission had a big delay in drive. And that ended up being a bad linear A solenoid. I've seen that a few times. To the point where, uh, um, you know, maybe that's becoming a common issue, but I probably did, honestly, I think two or three in a row, all with the same problem. And, and the main problem was that linear A. But uh, again, I did, you know, update the tubes, update the collar. Uh, well, change the collar if it's bad. If, this, if it's nice and smooth, you know, I just recommend changing the O-rings on it. Uh, and I think that is about it on this BCLA. So the number one common problem other than, you know, screens clogging with this BCLA are these feed tubes and I certainly recommend to update them uh, on these overhauls. All right, so I guess that is about it on this unit. All right, thank you guys for watching. Have a great day and we will see you next one.